everyone my name is shreya bosha and i am a student in iv professional school today i am going to discuss a project on financial analysis in python so let us get started so the project that i am going to discuss focuses largely on exploratory data analysis which is an important part of machine learning which helps us analyze and investigate data sets and summarize their main characteristics by employing data visualization methods it helps us determine how to best manipulate data sources to get the answers we need thus enabling us to discover hidden patterns spot anomalies test a hypothesis and understand the relationship between the variables so the aim of the project here will be to understand the use of pandas data reader for reading stock info from the internet and secondly visual exploratory data analysis in python using matplotlib pandas plotly cufflinks and seaborn libraries so what the data set is about so using pandas data reader we will get stock information for the following six banks that is bank of america city group goldman sachs jp morgan chase morgan stanley and wells fargo we will get the open high low close volume and adjusted close price for each of these six bank stocks and then concatenate them into a single data frame for further analysis now let us jump into the jupyter notebook so here we are going to focus on bank stocks and see how they progressed throughout the financial crisis in 2008 all the way to early 2016 So first we need to start with the proper imports. We need to install Pandas data reader for this to work. I have already installed Pandas data reader here. So Pandas data reader will allow us to read stock information from the internet. Now here this code will suppress some non harmful warnings which we can get while executing the codes. Here we are doing some necessary imports that is pandas, numpy, datetime, matplotlib, seaborn, and pandas data reader. So pandas data reader will allow us to get the stock information for the following six banks, and we need to Google the names of the banks tickers before we use them here as an argument of the data reader. So first we need to set the start and the end date. My start date is first Jan two thousand six, and the end date is first Jan two thousand sixteen. Next, here using Pandas Data Reader, we will import data for each bank. The first argument being the bank ticker, like we have BSC for Bank of America, C for Citigroup, GS for Goldman Sachs, and so on. Next, we have the source that is Yahoo Finance, and the third and fourth argument will be the start and the end date. Now, if we check the output of BSC, we will see that we have date as an index and high, low, open, close, volume, and adjusted close as our columns in this data frame. And we will get the similar kind of data frame for all of these six bank stocks. Next, here we will create a list of tickers for the six banks we have already discussed about, and then we are going to. concatenate them into a single data frame using pd.concat axis is equal to 1 since we will be concatenating them along the columns and keys will be equal to tickers so now if we check the head of bank stocks we get this as an output my bank tickers being the outer column and this high low open close volume will be my inner column now the data frames created above have been concatenating concatenated which makes sense since all of them have same indexes columns start and end date now here we will set the column names as bank ticker and stock info here we did not have any column names here and also round them up to two decimal places So our final output looks like this: the bank ticker's name being the outer column, stock info being the inner column, and we have multi-level indexing here. Now it might sometimes happen that Pandas data reader might not be able to read information for certain bank stocks and might give error. In that case, we have this pickle file called all banks. 
which have the data for all the six banks we will discuss about and we can import it and use accordingly. So I have already imported the file and if I show you the output it looks like this. Similar to the one we have created above. Now let us explore the data a bit. Our first question is to find the max close price for each bank stocks throughout the time period. So in order to grab the max close price for each bank we have to use dot access which is the cross section function which allow us to grab information from multi-level indexing. Like I showed you here we have multi-level indexing here. So we can grab this close price for all of the six bank stocks axis is equal to 1 since my close is the column and level is stock info since close is the part of the stock info column. So if we run this we get this data frame as an output and if we do dot max of this output we get the max closing price for each of the six bank stocks. Next, we will create an empty data frame called returns which will contain the returns for each bank stock. So, returns are typically defined by price of the day PT divided by price of the previous day PT minus 1 whole minus 1. So, here we have created the empty returns data frame. Here we have the tickers again. We, have, we are checking the names of the tickers which we have already declared above. And here the for loop goes for each bank ticker uh, as declared here and calculates the return using a percentage change function. So PCT change is my percentage change function. So if I show you this close price data frame here, so basically PCT change is calculating the percentage change for each day. So if we check the output of returns data frame, we get this is an output. We have NAND values in the first row since we will not have any returns in the first day. Next, we will create a pair plot using C bond of the returns data frame. We will be doing pair plot from second row that is index 1 since the first row has NAND values as I have shown you here. And... I am setting the diagonal kind as histograms else we will get KDE plots and I am setting the bins to 10. So if I run this, I get this beautifully looking pair plot as an output. So the pair plot of return seems good for all the stocks except for city group. The city return as we can see here and also here since it had a huge stock crash in 2008. So if we check the Wikipedia page of Citigroup, we will see that by November 2008, Citigroup was insolvent despite its receipt of rupees, sorry, dollar 25 billion. So that's the reason for the weird return of Citigroup. Now we will find the best and worst single day returns for each bank stocks. Since date is my index of the returns data frame, as you can see here, we will use IDX mean and IDX max to grab the data of lowest and highest return. So we will use IDX mean to grab the data of lowest return and we will use IDX max to grab the data of highest return. Now in this output of day of lowest return, we can see that Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, JPM, JP Morgan Chase and Wells Fargo share the same day for the worst drop. Now if we search this date on Google we will see that January 20, 2009 was the inaugural day of Barack Obama which is the reason for the worst drop for all of these four banks. Now if we do IDX Max we can grab the date of highest return. Now if we check the city, the date for the city group return of highest return, we can see that city group and JP Morgan Chase had the biggest gain day in about 1 to 3 day gaps from the day of worst drop. Like city group had day of lowest return on 6th May and highest return on 9th May. Similarly for JPM the day of highest return is 21st Jan. 
and the lowest return was 20 HM. So if we take a look at the standard deviation of the return, we can see that Citigroup appears to be the riskiest. And in order to find the riskiest stock for the year 2015, we will use the returns data frame and use dot loc to grab the dates from 1st Jan 2015 to 31st December 2015 and then calculate the standard deviation. So the standard deviation for all the banks are nearly the same except for Wells Fargo which is quite lower than all of them. Now here we will create a disk plot using C born of 2015 returns for Morgan Stanley. So first I am setting the figure size and then I will use sns.diskplot and use the returns frame loc for grabbing the dates of 2015 and doing ms return to grab the column of Morgan Stanley return from the returns data frame. Bins has been set to 75 and color is set to green. So if we look at the distribution of MS return for 2015, it looks normally distributed with a deviation of 0 0.06 from the average. Now, if we look at the disk plot of 2008 returns for Citigroup, the code is nearly same except the date has been changed uh, from 2015 to 2008 and we are grabbing the C return for Citigroup's. Uh, the bins have been set to 75 and color is red. So 2008 was quite a volatile year for Citigroup. The standard deviation is quite stretched out especially here at 0 0.6. So if we look at the distribution of return for a bank in a normal year like 2015 as Morgan Stanley, it was 0 0.06 and here in case of Citigroup it is 10 times at as much as the distribution shows. So next we will dive deeper into more visualizations using Plotly and Couplings. So I am checking the bank stocks head again. Here we will create a line plot showing close price for each bank for the entire index of time and same plot will be created using iPlot also. So here we are just grabbing the close column from the bank stocks for each of these bank tickers using the cross section function and plotting them and if we use the same code and use iplot here we will get this interactive plot. So here we can zoom in and look at the dips of Goldman Sachs and Citigroup during the financial crisis of 2008 and if I auto scale and zoom in here we can see the stock split of Citigroup in May 2011. So the blue line is for Citigroup and the green is for Goldman Sachs. Next we have the rolling 30 day average against close price for Bank of America stocks for the year 2008. So here basically I am setting the figure size and then using date formatter to format the date as the month name and the year name, year uh, digits and then uh, I am simply calculating the rolling average using this formula. So this window 30 can be uh, set to weekly or 60 day moving average also and then plotting them with a suitable label. So this orange line shows the Bank of America closing price and this blue line shows the 30 day moving average. Next here we will be creating a heat map of the correlation between the stock close price. So here we will do sns.heatmap. This is the close price column which we have already extracted our. We are doing .corr to calculate the correlation and a naught has been set to true so that we can get the labels here. So this plot shows the cross section of the closing prices and their correlation with annotations is equal to true. We can see that Bank of America, Citigroup and Morgan Stanley are strongly correlated to each other whereas JPM and Wells Fargo are also strongly correlated. Now here we are going to create a cluster map using Seaborn to cluster the correlations together. The formula is nearly same except that we are using cluster map here. 
so the cluster map here tries to group the correlation of city group as we can see here city group uh, bank of america and morgan stanley together and then goldman sachs jpm and wells fargo together so we can create the similar heat map using iplot also which is an interactive plot and we can see the same output here like bsc uh, city group and morgan stanley are strongly correlated as indicated by this blue color and similarly wells fargo and uh, jp morgan are also strongly correlated So now here we are going to create a candlestick plot using iplot which is used for financial analysis. So this candlestick plot tells us whether the stock went up or down that day. We are grabbing the Bank of America from bank stocks and the open high low and close price for Bank of America and grabbing the dates from 1st Jan 2015 to 1st Jan 2016 and plotting the candlesticks. So if I zoom in here and show you, it means the color green, uh, which means increasing and the color red means the price is decreasing. Now we are going to some TA plots, which is technical analysis plot. This technical analysis plot using cufflinks is based on simple moving average. Here we are going to create a simple moving average plot for Morgan Stanley for the year 2015. So we can see that the orange line shows the closing price and this blue lines show the simple moving average for the periods 13, 21 and 55 which are common technical analysis periods. And at last we have this another technical analysis plot which is the Bollinger Bank Band plot for Bank of America for the year 2015. So the code is nearly same and this uh, orange line shows us the closing price. We have SMA that is simple moving average in between and upper and lower band here. So this technical analysis plot shows the standard deviation of stock prices as, as it moves up through the time. It also shows the upper and lower band. This is my upper and this is lower band with the simple moving averages. So finally we have reached the end of our discussion where we learned about various visualization techniques in python and how we could identify the trends and hidden patterns through this exploratory data analysis i hope all of you like the video and thanks all for watching